Okay, we're gonna do brakes on a 2011 Tundra. I saw there's a couple of brake videos out here, but they did a really poor job explaining, or like the guy had a really strong accent and I couldn't understand it, so I figured I'll make one to help everybody out. Here's a list of tools you're gonna need. Three quarter inch socket for the lug nuts. I got this attached to an impact, but you know, a regular half inch drive will do it. Small hammer, just in case. We got a 17 mil here. This is for all four bolts that hold the caliper on and the piston to the caliper. You're going to need two of these. You can buy them at any auto parts store. M8 by 125. These are jack bolts, and I'll show you what they're used for later. These particular ones. Use a half inch socket on them, and uh, well, let's get to it. Okay, the next part we're going to be doing is we're going to we're going to unbolt here, and then down on the bottom, right here. These are both 17s. We're going to do that. Now these suckers are tight as all hell, so if you got your ratchet, you might need a cheater bar. So, you know, good luck to you there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try my impact and see if that works. Okay, so I got it separated. Once you unbolt them, it pretty much pops right out. You're left with the pads still on the base of the caliper, the rotor, okay? Then you're left with this part of the caliper, and as you see, it's sticking up. A lot of guys will just open up the drain vent. That's just, that's not needed. Just C-clamp this sucker back. I'll show you here. Okay, I got my sleep, my C-clamp on, and it's just a matter of compressing it. Now, just a little note: whatever you do, don't let this thing dangle from the brake hose. Everybody I've ever talked to said that's extremely bad. So when you're clamping it down, I just kind of set it on the rotor, and then uh, when I'm done clamping, I'm going to set it aside on the axle tube. Just don't dangle it from the As you see, I've got a compressed flush. It literally takes almost no effort at all. These things should easily go back. If it's giving you a lot of difficulty, you may have a problem. Okay, next step in the process here is to take off this one and this one down here. Both of which, you know, are 17s just like the last ones. And that will remove this whole caliper bracket rather than trying to dig these pads off because there's these little clips and they're kind of rust welded in place and rather than trying to fish it out maybe damaging the rotor or something with a screwdriver I'm just going to pull the whole thing out and then hammer these pads out okay so I got this out of the way as you can see one pad has got plenty of meat the other pad well that's a different story but uh, what I'm going to do is kind of gently tap on this thing here and here and knock these out with a small hand. On a side note, 94,000 miles on the original pads, it just hit the squealers versus a new pad. Big time difference. Okay, got the pads out. Now there's little metal retaining clips here, 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 and here. And they are rusted and corroded and brittle and nasty. Uh, some of the kits the one I bought was like five bucks more than the regular pads and it comes with brand new clips and uh, you know in order to keep the pad these pretty much is what holds the pads in place so if you live in an environment where you get salt like I do um, cheap insurance you know if you live down in Southern California I don't think you may need these but you know you live where I do you're gonna need them so little cheap insurance. Let's get the old ones out and put them in. Okay, ones. well we got all new hardware in place. These actually didn't give me much of a problem at all going and then they just kind of snap in. So. Now see here's where things get a little crazy with the Toyota, okay? The first thing you want to do is make sure your tires in the front are chalked, put it in neutral and take off the parking brake. Because the outside is a disc rotor but the inside right here that's a parking brake it's a drum like an old style car that's what it uses for its parking brake 
So if you don't take the parking brake off, you will never get this drum off. So you have to take the parking brake off. That's the first step. The next step is locate two threaded holes. One here, there's one on the other side. Now again, I live in a rusty area, so I sprayed a little PB blaster because the threads are kind of rusted up. You need at least one of those M8 by 125 bolts to thread in. At least one or you're never going to get this thing off. You got to screw it in and as you as you as you tighten it up, it forces the rotor off. You'll hear it go pop. And then you can pull the rotor off. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Okay, this is super awesome. I got them both to go in. On the other side, I only got to go one. So I got pretty lucky here. Let me go ahead and tighten these things down until it pops. And then you back them off, pull the rotor off. I'll show you what's going on underneath. Okay, I backed the jacking bolts out. And it's wanting to move a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of tap it with a little hammer around the outside. Knock a bunch of the crud out that's on the inside of the drum here. Build up salt, rust, stuff like that. I live in the Midwest. And then she should pop off. See, this is the part that trips out all my friends. As you can see, it's got a drum assembly, but that's only for parking brake. It's not actually meant for stopping the vehicle. You look on the inside, you got a drum on the inside of the rotor. Now you can get that turn, but I've only used this truck for parking. I've only used that for parking. There is no way I'm going to be doing these drums too, but there she is. She's off. I'm gonna go get these things turned and then we're gonna go back for reassembly. Okay, so you just kind of load the pads into the bracket. You don't have to worry about how far you push them in because they'll line up on the rotor and then the caliper will actually squeeze them very at once. So I just kind of barely set them in there. That way it can bolt up nicely. Okay, I slid the freshly machined rotor on, slid right on. Then I set this in place and I just kind of finger put these bolts on. I'm going to go ahead and snug them down and then I'm going to bolt on the rest of the cow. Okay. Well, we got the other bolts on, kind of slid in. Took a little bit of finagling pushing this in just a hair. Slid over. Bolted right up. Gave me no issues. Before I put the wheel on, I'm going to spray all this down with some brake cleaner because there might be a little, I wiped them down, but there might be a little bit of residual oil from when they turn the rotors they cut them down they use a little bit of oil so I'm just gonna spray it down and put the wheels back on and done there you go that's about all the information I got